Well, hello everybody and welcome to a follow-up video. Um, as you can see, if you were at my Sunday stream, I've been uh, working on watercoloring some Christmas cards and um, I carried on. I uh, watched uh, Marami Small Art, M-A-R-I-M-I, and then Small Art, I think is one word. Um, and she was doing a bleed technique to show how to do Christmas trees and ornaments and uh, things like that. She is, uh, I believe she's Polish, and so she calls them baubles. Uh, but in her accent, it sounds like she's calling them bubbles. <laughs> so uh, these are my bubbles, my baubles, um, otherwise known as ornaments, uh, hanging on a little pine branch and uh, I think it's very cute. I uh, I liked it very much. I haven't decided yet whether or not I want to add any bling on to the uh, ornaments themselves, but while I was at it, um, the package that Shara was sending arrived and so I thought that I would open it. I promised her that I would do it and make a video about it. So. Give me a second to clean all of this up, and uh, we'll do a happy mail. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, Shara, this is for you, <laughs> because I told you that I would. Uh, I have just, all I've done is open the box. All right, so everybody, you can see I'm pulling the last string now. And, ooh, ooh. Ooh, oh, yay. The first thing is the Ampat electric eraser. Oh, yay. <laughs> this must be the thing that you said that was unrelated to the other thing. <laughs> okay. Um, Shira, what have you done? What have you done? My dear friend, Shara Craig, what have you done? Merry Christmas, my beautiful friend. Color something pretty. Love, Shara. What a sweetheart. Okay. I'm trying to think. It's I'm trying to think what was on my wish list that could be this size. Eek, I don't remember. Oh, can we just take a moment to admire these gorgeous bags that Amazon uses? <gasps> oh my word. 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 Are you serious? Oh my word. Oh, now I see why you were so anxious for me to have this this, this afternoon. Uh, oh, crinkle alert. Crinkle alert, everybody. I'll, I'll put up a crinkle alert. I love that these cellophane bags, though, come with these these uh they're so they're easy open now oh my goodness oh look at this look at oh stop okay i'm actually out of room in my office oh my goodness oh 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 my goodness Oh, Shara, thank you. This is amazing. These are the real brush pens, everybody. Oh, would you look at that. Oh. Oh, would you look at that. Okay. So let me see if I can turn them this way. So these are the yellows and reds. 
I have to swatch these. Oh, look. Look, though. How very, very cool. These are like watercolors in a, in a brush or in a, a pen. And then they have these very cool brush tips. Oh my goodness. Okay. So there are the yellows and the reds. Reds, purples into pinks. It looks like. Oh, I see. They're all okay. So they're all along the cap. All right. So reds into pinks, into purples. Oops. Sorry about the autofocus, everybody. Let me fix that. Uh, advanced. Turn the autofocus off so it doesn't throb. All right. So there's purples, lavenders, blues more blues, turquoises, into greens. And it looks like the colors are actually written in microscopic print on the, um, <laughs> on the pens themselves. And when I say microscopic print, I'm not kidding. Oh, look, I've got ink or paint or something on myself. Ah, Spearmint Blue. Okay, so that is Spearmint Blue. Peacock Blue. I love my little tool. <laughs> and the greens. Look at that. And browns and grays and blacks. And there are 96 of these. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, you know what that means, right? It means I need to, to set up a swatch book. And we're going to do it right now. I'm going to set up some pages and come back. And we're going to, so I won't make you watch the whole thing, but we'll swatch like two out of each color variety and see what kind of vibrancy and coolness. And oh my goodness. Look, it even comes with a water brush. How very, very cool. And this is so that you can uh, use them on plastic and dilute them a little bit if you want a lighter shade. So, uh, I'll be right back. Oh, yay! And an electric eraser. This, this is yay. <laughs> I'll be right back. Well, hi everybody and welcome back. Um, <laughs> Shara, I still can't believe this. Oh my goodness, I am, I, I, I just, I'm speechless. I am absolutely speechless. I don't know what to say. Um, what a generous gift, A. Uh, and B, thank you very, very much. And Merry Christmas to you too. Uh, I... And this is so cool. I put batteries in it and tested it out and it works great. <laughs> and look, it comes with all of these uh, these replacement batteries. Uh, this is the Amphat, uh, this one. And uh, so it's got, it's battery powered. It takes two AAAs, uh, which I had. Thank goodness I had. <laughs> and uh, uh, it comes with all of these. And then it's also got these little adapter thingies that you can put these little teeny ones in that you can really get in and do some fine erasing uh, with it. And you just, you pull, pull it out, I believe. Well, I'll have to, I'll have to study the instructions on how to do it but you put the batteries in back here uh and then yeah it's an electric eraser and listen to how silent it is you can barely hear it 
And it even has a little brush to brush away your erasing stuff. <laughs> that is so cool. Thank you so much for this. And, oh my goodness, for these. Now, I did, uh, uh, went online and I tried to find a downloadable color chart, which I always try to do, uh, to see if somebody has already done the work and is willing to, you know, give you a, a free printable uh, blank, and I could not find one. I could find one for the 48 set, but not the 96. So I'm going to make my own. This is just a sheet of cardstock. Uh, I put, like, uh, I usually divide into 12 or 13 sections. This one is 13. Uh, I just, all I did is I just took a ruler, uh, marked the halfway point, marked the halfway point, and then drew lines accordingly. Uh, they are approximate distances. I, you know, didn't get too fussy with, you know, making sure that it's exactly, you know, six or six tenths of an inch, which it works out to be about six tenths of an inch. But nonetheless, all right, so are we ready? Are we ready? Uh, that's good. I'm glad you're ready. I'm not. Hang on. <laughs> okay, now I'm ready. I wanted to pick out um, a few more colors for us to look at. Uh, so I, uh, But I also want them to be in the right order on the chart. So let's look at a few. Uh, let's start with the lightest one in the box, which is this uh, pale peach. And that is truly a pale peach. Ooh, I like the way those go down. <laughs> That is so cool. Okay, this is acid yellow. Look at that. Look at how smooth they are. And they just lay down beautiful color. And it's not, you know, it's not in your face kind of vibrant. Uh, this is bumblebee yellow. Oops. Erg. Okay, so it's a slightly golder yellow. Very true to what its name is. You would definitely use that to color your bumblebees with. Okay, and... I have sunset yellow. Oh, look at how gorgeous these are. And they're not, see, I was afraid they were so highly pigmented that you couldn't get any subtlety out of them. But, oh, look at that. Oh, oh. For people like me who are like water mediums, this is like the holy grail of, oh, look, look. This is apricot, which would be like the, uh, the ripe part of the apricot. You would want to color that color. Oh, this is true red. So the perfect balance between not a blue red and not an orange red and actual red red. That's true red. All right. Then we have, whoops, let's try the cad orange just to, because I have it marked. Whoops. <laughs> ah. 
We'll try the cadmium orange. which is a very, just as it should be, it is the red side of orange. And this is the tomato red. And that is exactly the color of a ripe red tomato or tomato. You say tomato and I'll say tomato. And this is the autumn red. Ooh. This is like the exact color of my hair. <laughs> okay. Isn't that interesting? And you can really, um, you know, that was like a second coat of it. So that is, as we get into the deeper colors, the saturation is more. Um, okay. And let me prepare a second tray, and I'll be right back. Okay. So now I am ready with a new tray. And so I was starting out with a flamingo pink. And the spaces that I'm leaving in between are the colors that I'm not swatching. So, all right, so this is the flamingo pink, which is just the kind of salmony pink that you'd think it would be. I am loving that, that these are really, really true to their names. Um... I want, this is wine red. So like a burgundy red. Ooh. That's a pretty color. And that is just the color of really good, uh, <laughs> Really good burgundy, too. Uh, okay. This is a bl blush red. Sorry. And... Jumped a, a couple of uh, spaces. This is a bubblegum pink, so a really pastel y pink. There are a lot of pinks in this set. Okay, so it's going to be great for flowers. Um, now that's looking a little more orange on camera than it is in real life. So let me see. No. Closer. Now I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it with this with this blue background. Um, but that is, that is really a pretty pink color. It's just not, it doesn't seem to want to come through. Let me see if I change the camera angle. If it looks a little more pink. It's coming through awfully orange for the camera. I'm sorry. It's not orange. It's actually pink. Um, okay. Okay. So this is the fuchsia pink, which is always one of my go-to colors for flowers. Pretty. That shows up just like it, just 
like it looks here. Uh, this one is the mulberry pink. Ooh. Oh, that is gorgeous. That is a gorgeous color. Ooh. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous color. And this is the amaranth pink. So this is sort of that one's baby sister. I don't know, they look they look pretty similar from here. <laughs> and uh uh yeah, they look pretty similar uh on both the paper and on the camera. Um that's interesting. Okay. Uh moving on to a new tray. Uh let's see. Let's pick a, what's the first purple we come across? Lavender, okay. Let's try lavender. The reason why I'm doing this part off camera is because once again, this stuff is literally micro printed on here. So it's time consuming. A180, 162. A-162. Okay. Oh, that's a pretty purple. Very lavender. Okay, let me... Uh, Prepare the rest of this tray, and I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, I love the names of some of these. All right, this set has got a seriously gorgeous set of purples in it. Um, this is the Light Magenta. Love it. Absolutely love it. This is the Oob Purple or UB Purple. Um, in my world, we would call this the Dusky Purple. Okay. Gorgeous. This is the Orchid Purple. Can you tell purple is one of my favorite colors, so I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to swatch all of these, uh, all of the purples, but I held myself to just a few. There are more. There are more, believe me, purples. Uh, and, you know, one of my biggest complaints about marker sets and things like that is there's never enough purples. And then look at this. Arteza really delivers. This is orchid purple. Now, my understanding is, is that these are water-based um, as opposed to, uh, it's water and ink, not uh, watercolor and, uh, or um, not alcohol. That's what I mean. They're not alcohol. They're water and they're water. This is Wisteria. Oh, that is just the color that my Wisteria used to be. I say used to be because it's one of the many things that I left back in Nevada were my beautiful wisteria. Although I think it grows here. I just don't have any in my yard. Uh, okay. Then I've got uh, violet. So I skipped a couple here. Uh, and this is violet. Oh, yep. That is a gorgeous gorgeous violet and remember guys this is not watercolor paper this is just you know just cardstock so um 
All right, this is the eggplant, which is uh, uh, basically aubergine in a lot of different sets, but um, eggplant, which is the, the big brother of dusky purple. So I love it. It's sort of a blue, a more of a blue purple. And this is the dark blue. Is that right? Yep, this is dark blue. Which to me is currently reading dark purple. But it looks blue on the screen. So maybe it must be the angle or something that I'm seeing it at. Okay, this is royal blue. To all of my uh, European friends, is this true? Is this is is this the royal the blue of royals? <laughs> The Blue of Royals. This is the Periwinkle Blue. So pretty. And this is the Carolina blue. I love it. Okay. On to a new tray. Be right back. Okay, now, some of you may have noticed <laughs> that I was more than halfway over my page and I was still had three trays to go uh, and it was because I miscalculated how many were on here. There were only 81. Obviously, I had 81 spaces. I had already discounted uh, in my counts. I had discounted this bottom portion here so uh, I've reclaimed some space over here it won't be quite as neat as my swatch book usually is but it'll do uh, and beside which there are just I mean there's just a ginormous amount of blues and greens in this wonderful set so this is denim blue and yep that is a true color that is the color of brand new denim. Ooh, that is gorgeous. Okay, uh, this is ocean blue. Ooh, look at how pretty that is. I love it. Okay, and then I went all the way light to a spearmint blue, which should be pretty icy looking. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> That's a perfect ice. Okay. These are so cool. This is teal. Oh, I love it. I love teal. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that is so gorgeous. Okay, next is turtle green. Ooh. Oh, 
And that's interesting. I would call that more of a forest green, but okay, turtle green, turtle green will work. Uh, fresh green. And seafoam green. Ooh, that's pretty. That's really pretty. Okay, so there is a great selection of greens in here. Okay, next tray, I'll be right back. Okay, and because greens are so important to all of us, and because, look, there's an entire tray of them here. Uh, we're going to do more than just a few. Uh, so this is emerald green. Oh, that is gorgeous. That is a true emerald green. That's probably the prettiest emerald green I've seen. And here's a pine green. Another true color that is truly a pine green. Oops. Do a little auto focus in here and turn that back off. Hopefully, that is in focus. No, it's not. Now it is. Okay, this is a seaweed green. That is pretty. And a forest green. Ooh. Ooh, that is gorgeous. That is really gorgeous. <coughs> Excuse me. And a green green. So that is true green. The absolute balance between yellow and blue. This is bright green. Oh, cool. All right, this is pale green. Oh, isn't that a lovely shade? This is pea green. Peas porridge hot. Peas porridge cold. Oops. That is a gorgeous green. This one is Crocodile green. Okay, so that's a lovely olive green. And this one is actual olive green. Nice difference there. So look at that, and I didn't even, I mean, all those, and I didn't even use every single one, so there are lots more greens. Okay, last tray, and I'll get it ready and be right back. Okay, last tray, and as you can see, I've selected 
a lot of them. Uh, this is chamomile, which is uh, still in the green family, but we're starting to get down into the switch over to browns, um, which comes next. And so this one is the ginger. Oh, isn't that pretty? And that is just the color of ginger. Um, so I love that. I love that so many of these are so true to the color. This is coffee. Now, the reason why I selected so many of the browns is because I love the names. So there's no, you, you're not going to find burnt umber. The closest that you come to a color that we recognize, you know, in corresponding to other sets is um, uh, uh, chocolate. But so this one is walnut. Quite similar to copy, but not quite as dark and we're going to skip chocolate and go to grape purple ooh <laughs> that's pretty I've always known that purple and brown were uh, related colors but isn't that pretty that's grape purple Okay, now <clears throat> I have selected all of the grays because grays are so important in coloring. I use them a lot uh, for shading and shadowing. This is Payne's gray, quite the most useful gray uh, in any in any uh, coloring work. This is Fog gray which is a green gray. So you have a blue gray and a green gray. This is dolphin gray. Which is sort of a blue green gray. Then this is smoke gray. Uh, I call that almost a teal gray. Interesting. This is elephant gray. So kind of a dark gray. And I call that a, a dark green gray. This is ash black. So like a dark charcoal. And last but not least, you have a true black. That is, in fact, a true inky black. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, that is just a sort of a color sampling. I will fill in the rest of this and bring it right back to show you guys. Um, Shara, this really is... Let me see if I can get it completely in focus here. This is... An absolutely amazing gift, honey. Um, thank you so very, very much. And you know that I will be using these. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm not done with this video yet because I am going to fill in the rest of these. And then I want to actually um, show a watercoloring and see all the different things that they'll do. 
So uh, stay tuned and I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. Uh, I have finished the swatches and as you can see, they are gorgeous. <laughs> Is that a word, gorgeous? Uh, absolutely stunning colors. And um, there were a bunch in there that uh, I really uh, love. Honey, which is just, I, that is just sublime. That is a gorgeous color. Um, where's the other one? Uh, let's see, orange. Cad. Um, the thistle purple is beautiful. Um, I hadn't swatched that one. The lilac, oh, I mean, these are just fantastic. And look at all those greens. I mean, the chamomile, uh, <coughs> the acid green, which is my favorite chartreuse. I love that one for uh, underlayment. There's a bright green. These are just amazing colors. Okay, so uh, I pulled out my uh, copy of In the For Watercolor with Me in the Forest uh, because uh, I've never colored anything in it or done any of the exercises. Uh, even though I've had it now for a few months. And so I, and it's, beside which, it's made of watercolor paper. And um, so I wanted to see what these would do. And uh, this way I don't have to draw anything. <laughs> it's late, I'm tired. Uh, let me find a, a, a brush. I need a brush. My kingdom for a brush. Okay, so there's some watercolor brushes and some water. And uh, I'm getting uh, these out because there's a couple of experiments that I want to try. I want to see, I know that they're going to color on this just fine. What I want to see is what else they will do. All right, so, uh, and that's where all of this other stuff comes in. So I am going to, not that one, this one. I am actually going to wet this leaf. down and we're going to try a little wet on wet action and see what happens. Maybe nothing, <clears throat> maybe nothing will happen, but I'm going to try it anyway. I want to try the rosewood because I, that's just a fascinating color to me. And now I'm going to pick a gold, a nice sunset yellow. Oops. Where is my sunset yellow? Oh, that's the honey. Let's try that.
He said they don't actually bleed like, you know, if you drop, um, where'd it go? Like this, this was all wet on wet, actual colors bleeding into each other. Um, but they are, they certainly do play well together. Uh, let's see here. Let me go for a, um, let's see. Let's go for a brown. Let's go down to the browns. And we'll pull a, uh, let's see what, a, let's pull a ginger. Oh, this is the tawny. Nope, not the tawny. Definitely the ginger. Okay. Adding just a tad more water here. Okay. So this is the ginger. Okay, so apparently it does want, it wants some, this color anyway, wants dry paper. So it is light enough that it wants dry paper. Okay. So we'll change to a darker brown. Let's go with the chocolate. All right, my guess is, is that what is going on here is that instead of the brush um, the paper soaking or pulling the ink out of the brush I think what's happening there is that the brush is soaking up the water Okay, so maybe I need to dry it a little bit. And then spread the water around with the brush. Okay, now I want to pull a green. And I want the olive green which I believe is this one oh yeah see that's nicely pigmented okay now let's see if I can pull that with water I'm just trying to see what these will do. You know? Oh, yeah. Look at how pretty that is. Oh, look at how pretty that is. <laughs> Actually, that turned out really nice. I like it. 
I like it a lot. Okay, now let's try without the extra water. And let's do this one over here. And I'm going to kind of try and do it like, let's see, let's see if I can get the other one in there. Okay. My problem here is, is that I'm out of space. Um, okay. Let's pull this. And let's work in the... Okay, let's work in the... Let's work in the reds. We're going to grab the... We're going to grab the... We're going to grab... We're going to grab the tomato red. Okay. Which I believe is this one. Okay, so we're going to grab the tomato red. I want to use that, and then I do want to go over that just a little bit with water. Got it sort of balanced up there. There we go. That's better. I just don't want it to run off the side of the page. Okay. And then let's go with the honey. which is probably a little more golden than I really need. But we'll go with it anyway. Because it's so pretty. Go back to that ginger that I liked. Where is the ginger? Uh, let's see. Where was the ginger? I was in the browns. Okay, go back to the browns. Oops. Is that it? Yes. Okay, so this is the ginger. So I want the ginger on this side. Okay, 
and then I can pull in the darker brown. So I think that I'm going to use the walnut. No, this is the copy. Copy will do. Let's use that here on this side. And then use the water brush. First, sort of create a spot for it to bleed into, and then sort of encourage it to bleed into that spot. Okay, so let's see if we use that. What did I just do with it? What did I just do with the copy? Okay. All right, so let's try a different approach. Let's put a little bit of it on this plastic sheet. Okay. And grab it up with the water brush. Oh yeah, see? Look at that. Look at that. Any kind of new tools, you gotta learn to use them. Oh, how cool is that? And how convenient. Okay, now I need to wait for that to dry so I can add in the veins. But look at how cool that would be. Let those sort of bleed into each other. Not quite the same. I'm going about it a little differently, but still it's cool result. All right, we have one more. Let's go with a true autumn leaf here or a Okay, this one is actually, let's go back to the olive green. <clears throat> Where is our olive green? So I want to just sort of lay some of this olive green in here. And then put a little more over here on this sheet. Make sure I grab some of that up. See the water, the, the paper drank in the pigment. So you can move it, but you have to work at it for a while. Let's just try and bait it up. I mean, that's the same amount of pigment. This 
So I think that just like the um, Yeah, just like any of the water-based watercolor uh, pens, in order to get a really good uh, blend or, um, I mean, I have no doubt that you could blend with them. Right on the paper, but I think that if you work it with a, I mean, look, that was just that little amount of pigment. That is so cool. And I imagine that as that dries, it'll straighten out a little bit. Okay, I'm thrilled. <laughs> Obviously, I have to learn to use them better. But it is fascinating to see what they will and won't do. So if you want to spread your color, or you want to bleed your colors into each other, use the, uh, use this palette. Or, you know use the back of a plastic sheet, the smooth side of a plastic sheet, uh, and you can do it. That's fascinating. Okay, so now I could find, I could probably take the brush itself and do, because that's a little drier, uh, let's take the brush itself and the walnut just because it's a good dark shade. I don't remember where they were, and I've covered them up now. Sorry, I've got it in the dark. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I just love it. Whoops. Oh well, they can't all be perfect. <laughs> um... This one is still pretty wet. But it gives you an idea. You can just go back over it with your... <coughs> now, see, this one's too wet. It's actually bleeding, so I'll stop. I'll stop. That is so cool, though. Thank you, Shara. This is absolutely a wonderful Christmas gift. Um, and you really shouldn't have, honey. Um, I'm glad you did, though. <laughs> um, everybody, I am overwhelmed, as always. Uh, you know, the kindness of this coloring community and the people that I've encountered here is just, just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Thank you for adding this fantastic supply to my arsenal. And uh, I promise we will use this a lot. Uh, 
Yay! <laughs> Archie's a month. I, I kept pulling them off the list because the price would go up and I'd pull them off my list. Then the price would drop again and I'd put them back on and then I'd pull them off again. <laughs> the, the brush, the 96 set, I mean, I kept swapping them out, the 48 uh, to the 96, depending upon, you know, their relative price range. And, uh, and thank you for catching it at a 96. <laughs> oh, anyway. Uh, this is absolutely gorgeous. Look at these gorgeous bright colors. And look. <laughs> I love this thing. <laughs> um, I spend hours erasing, guys. Absolutely hours erasing. The idea that I could actually, you know, finally erase just the line I want to instead of my, you know, my... This guy here, which gets a lot of use. Uh, uh, this is probably the fifth or sixth one of these that I've gone through. Um, or, you know, started going through. I usually wear them down to a, a, to the point where you can hardly pick it up to erase. Uh, and then, of course, I do have this, which I absolutely love. But uh, you have to... It's big, for one thing. And... Uh, it's manual, so, you know, here, uh, well, you've all seen me do it on my drawing videos, <laughs> anyway, and yay, I can erase out highlights in my, uh, in the pastel thing I'm working on, too, so that's wonderful, uh, everybody, thank you for joining me for this happy mail and swatching of the Arteza Brush Marker 96 color set, uh, real brush pens, Arteza, and they are absolutely wonderful. Um, thank you, Shara, and until we meet again, everybody, please color something pretty.